when we're talking about social media, of course, I think the most important place to be for a small business owner is Facebook. We're going to be talking about a couple of other social media platforms, but I, I, of all of them, I think Facebook is probably the most important. What I'm going to do today is talk about and uh, demonstrate some uh, case studies that various companies have done with their Facebook presence. Here's an example of a good um, Facebook presence that Starbucks has. And the good thing about having a presence on Facebook is that it, it's an ecosystem that allows for better engagement because people within Facebook have a lot of friends. And if they happen to like something on your Facebook page and they like it, they're going to be letting all their friends know that they like it. I think the average amount of friends right now for a typical Facebook user is something like 200. But of course, if all of their 200 friends have 200 friends, every time you like something, it's going to grow exponentially. And that's why it's important, I think, to develop your Facebook presence. Now, you can't just set up a page without doing, doing anything with it. Here's an example of what Starbucks does. And if you can see there, they offer a coupon that allows friends of or people who like their page to share a $5, $10, whatever they, their, the person decides uh, as a uh, credit to buy Starbucks. And it's a great way, I think, for uh, Starbucks to use the Facebook platform and get the word out about their product. What's important is not just how many likes you have, in this case, 29 million likes that Starbucks has, but also how many people are actually talking about your product. In this case, Starbucks has 174,000 people talking about their product. And ultimately, that's what you want to try to get with your Facebook presence, is to get people interacting with your presence there. Here's another example, Home Depot. And what they're doing as far as to try to get engagement and showcase their products is they're using a lot of videos. I think this is a great idea because there's so many aspects of uh, home care and redesign that lend themselves very well to a how-to instructional type video. This has been very successful for Home Depot. Now, you may be looking at this and say, okay, these are great. These are big companies. They've got millions of, of likes and fans and friends. But I'm just a small business. Does a Facebook business page really serve me well? Well, let me show you a couple of case studies of how it's worked for smaller business owners. This is a business that's actually New York-based. And uh, if you see the bullet points there, they re rely entirely on social media. But what they do is kind of interesting. They post a daily password that allows people to redeem for free cupcakes. And their advice is also something that I think it's important to, to make note of. They say, make it relevant to the customer, keep it fresh, and remember that the return on investment may come slowly. People are not going to flock to your social media site overnight. Technology is about the network effect. It takes time for those connections to build. And I think that's important to remember for people who think, OK, I'm putting up a Facebook page, and then two months later, how come I don't have 1,000 likes, and how come I'm not getting a, a lot of business? It's not so much about having a page. It's what you do with that page once you put it up. And here's an example of what they do. I think it's a great idea. Here's what their page actually looks like. And you could see uh, right above the visual on the left, there's a promo code that they can use to get their, in this case, third dozen free. Here's what their analytics look like. They've got over 5,000 likes, and they've got 174 people talking about it. For a small business, 
That's not bad to have a, 174 people talking about your business. And what's good about Facebook is you could, as you can see with a the graph there, you could also check. So from week to week, you can tell how your analytics are doing. That's, that's a great aspect of, of Facebook. Here's another amazing example. This guy is a wedding photographer from Minneapolis. His target is engaged women ages 22 to 28, and he claims that he only spends about 300 or has only spent about $300 on Facebook ads in the past two years and has generated more than $60,000 in business. I mean, that is incredible. So it just goes to show that you can get business with social media if you do it right. And in this case, he's, he's really smart about targeting uh, his target audience, and he could do that through Facebook. Now, there's a whole psychology, and this is not going to be a presentation on Facebook, but one thing you can, you can do within Facebook is to go into various groups. So you can start working within various groups in Facebook, and you could also do what he did, with, which is uh, create ads targeting people in these certain groups. This is what my Facebook business page looks like. And uh, you see I, underneath the, uh, the title on the bottom, there are four different tabs photos, videos, learn more, events. I think you can post up to eight or 10. It's really up to you. You can customize those. Um, I have some photos. Photos I, is by default. And then the other tabs can be customized. I think video is very important, so I have a bunch of videos on there if you click on that second link. I also think it's important to have uh, more information. So that's what that learn more tab is. And that, again, goes to more video. I think video is a great way to tell a story. And the last one is events. I happen to be speaking, doing a lot of speaking the next couple of months. So I want to make sure that people know how they can access my uh, speaking engagements if they're uh, able to. This is my personal page on Facebook. Since it's called Facebook, I figured I'd do the many faces of John Follis on there. And uh, the way you get into a business page, if you don't, or don't already know, is you can have a direct link, of course, to your business page, but many people will come to a person's business page because they're friends with that person in Facebook, and they may want, may want to check out their business. So, of course, it's the first link right above my uh, uh, portrait shot on the left, the lower left, where it says uh, owner and founder of Follis Marketing Therapy. And through that link is where you can get into your business page from your uh, personal page on Facebook. Now, it amazes me how many people, when I click on that link on their personal page, end up having a business page that looks like this. There's nothing worse to um, hurt your business credibility than to have a business link go to a business page that has absolutely no information, doesn't even have a phone number, doesn't even, I mean, talk, forget about customization and videos and images. This link doesn't even have a, uh, any information or phone number. So if you have nothing to say about your business, it's probably not a good idea to have a link to it from your personal page. If you're looking to set up a business page on Facebook, uh, if you don't know, it's fairly simple. You just type in, you key in the word pages. It'll take you to an interface like this. You choose the business that applies to yours, and you fill out the information. It's actually fairly simple and shouldn't take more than, than 20 minutes to put some basic information. Now, earlier I said that it's a very confusing time to be in, in marketing, and there's a lot of contradictory um, uh, points of view out there. And, and here's an example. This is a study from a Boston consulting group that says that 33% of millennial consumers are more likely to buy a brand if it has a Facebook page. That sounds pretty good. The article was actually saying why you should have a, a Facebook business page and using millennials as a ex great example. Well, you know, that's good if you're going after millennials. If you're not going after millennials, it turns out that only 17% of non-millennial consumers are more likely to buy a brand if it has a Facebook page. So I look at this and I say, okay, is that a reason to have a Facebook business page? Or is that not a reason to have a Facebook page? Because if you turn that around, 
you could say 67% of millennials are not more likely to buy your brand if it has a Facebook page, and 83% of uh, non-millennials are, are not likely to buy your brand if it has a Facebook page. Now, is this a reason not to have a Facebook page? I don't think so, because if you look at the, the other statistics, um, everything is saying that not only are more and more people developing a presence on Facebook, but of course, as a result of that, more and more businesses are developing a presence on Facebook. And not just small businesses, but Fortune 500 businesses. So I think it's really important to develop your Facebook pre presence because I think those numbers we just talked about earlier are only going to change as we, we move into the future. Facebook, more and more, is going to be a very relevant way to be marketing your business.